we get a nice short video for you guys this time. I tried something new this time around and it it kind of worked. More about that later. Now just a heads up on these large flat sprue connectors, if your nippers have a heavy bevel on them, often enough it will drive the nippers into the part and you'll cut a big chunk out. Just break these off, we'll couple back and forth and they'll snap right off. As long as you don't twist them, you will get a clean break. On these old trucks, there's a not a lot to the interiors. It's basically two colors. So anything that's going to be the same color, I'm going to glue them together now, just get some sub-assemblies going. It's less headache later on down the road. Just like on a real second gen, the upper dash pad is complete trash. Luckily, ours is just warped. It's not cracking away every time somebody hits a bump and just falling apart in pieces. I do love my second gens, but man, they have some problems. And so does this dash. I gotta bust out the super glue to get everything to hold together. Splat. There's, there's no cutout on that side for that pin to go into. And as you probably saw in the previews, we're not using this. I only put it together for those of you following along doing a box stock build. I rummaged through my parts bin and found some Viper seats. The Viper truck needs Viper seats. Now I do have to give Ravel, Monogram, whoever originally made this kit, some props. These trucks were originally intended to be workhorses. The whole back of the cab is storage. Now, that's going to leave everything exposed when we put these seats in. But that's okay, because that's how it's supposed to be on a real truck. It's ugly, but it's accurate. So off to the paint booth. I couldn't do my Corey Taylor scream because everybody in the house is asleep. So I just chose to make a weird noise. Hopefully you understand the angst and frustration I was trying to imply there. And for those of you curious, this is that same hardware store flat black that I've been using for the past year or so. This can seems to never run out of paint. Speaking of paint, for the interior we are using Tamiya's XF, that's X-Ray Romeo 19, Sky Gray. Here's a pro tip for you. Those Viper seats, they were molded in black. Going over that with a light base coat is hardly ever going to work out, so shoot it with a silver base coat. Silver is very neutral, it covers very well, and it will take anything lighter than itself on top of it and look the part. Oh, that reminds me, somebody asked a few videos ago why I don't use primer on these small little fiddly parts. 
The very simple answer is you don't need to. The long answer is multiple coats of paint will make things not fit correctly. So for anything other than the body parts, I use paint sparingly and I do not use primer. At the beginning, I mentioned I tried something new that was somewhat questionable. This was it. The only flocking that I had on hand was this charcoal color. It's a little bit darker than I had wanted, so I thought maybe if I use a light paint to quote-unquote glue it in, it'll lighten it up a little bit. And yes, I know I should probably sift that through a strainer, but I don't know. I wasn't thinking at all when I'd done this. I just put down paint and like, ah, I gotta get flocking down. This is where things get sketchy. I did not record this just in case it didn't work out and then my failure would be immortalized on video forever. I just took that same gray and paint it over it. And it worked surprisingly well actually. Once we get to the weathering later, these two colors will clash together extremely well. Masking is always very stressful. It will make or break a paint job. I do have to admit it's somewhat satisfying pulling off masking tape and seeing a perfect paint line. I may have spoke too soon. A little bit of touch up I got to do right there. I'll hit that with a brush later, you won't even notice it. And as we all found out in part two, these decals are trash. I'm just gonna leave the backing paper on and not even try to use it as a decal. What I ended up doing was putting just a little bitty dab of white glue in there just to hold it in place like a sticker. Truth be told, you don't even need to do that. You could just set it in there and then wedge it in place with this bezel glass thing whatever this part's legal name is. Now as far as the weathering goes, I just went over all the panel lines and I was kind of sloppy about it and then just left it as that. I didn't even clean any of it up. Once this panel line accent dries, it'll lighten up dramatically and it will blend in very well. As you can see on these seats here. First things first though, with the flocking, the paint, I kind of plug some holes. I'm just going to go back and knock all those out here real quick. Now up close, that flocking does look bad. Don't worry. The ugly parts are going to be covered up. I'm keeping things kind of old school hot rod. I painted this shifter ball white just to kind of simulate the old school her shifters. I always like those, so yeah, it's my build.
These seats took a whole lot of test fitting to make them sit low enough, forward enough, in the right angle. After about 20 minutes though, I got them just where I wanted them to be. The firewall is basically the front well, wall for the interior tub, so it got included in this section of the build. Now I will go through a tutorial on how I got these colors just right a little bit later on, but for now I'm going to glue this in place just because I know it's going to be a pain to do it later underneath the cowl of the truck. And by later on, I mean the next video. That's it for this one though guys. After my last 20 videos have been, what, 30 minutes long almost, I kept this one short and sweet. And as always, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Have a good night.